Welcome clone. Thank you for taking the time to review the Hoover Dam tutorial for Fallen Earth. Fallen Earth is a free to play game. Now this means that you can play the game without having to pay a dime. You can advance to the maximum level of the games, now which is as of this tutorial is level 55. You can craft, you can use the in-game mail system, auction house, and many other features. But free to play accounts do have limitations. Now this tutorial is not about the free to play limitations, it is about the new player tutorial. See the Fallen Earth website for more information on limitations of free to play accounts. For this tutorial, I'll be using a free to play account to show you the game. The Hoover Dam tutorial is the very first quest line you will do in Fallen Earth. This is designed for you to learn the basics of movement, interaction, and combat. When you first get into the game, you will have a large graphic in front of you that advertises paid accounts. You can click the X at the top of the advertisement and it will reduce itself to an icon that says Upgrade. This icon can be moved out of the way of the interface. Now that you've created your first character, let's talk a little bit about the game interface. The game interface is pretty straightforward. As you're looking at the game screen, look at the top left. You have your stats bar there. This shows you your hit points in red, your stamina in blue, and your gamma in green. There's also a number next to these bars. Now this is actual, the, just the numerical value for that bar. Now to the right of the bars, you'll see a large dashed circle. And in the center, it says, currently, 0 AP. These are your action points that you have to spend to increase your stats and skills. Now for each dash you fill, you will earn 3 AP. Fill all the dashes in and you gain a level. Now more on the AP uh, later in another tutorial. Now you also see your current level and total AP. This total AP includes all AP spent and unspent. At the top of the health bar, you will see two dark circles. One will light up with a mail icon, letting you know that you have in-game mail and the other is for in-game voice. Now on a side note about in-game voice is personally I've not heard anyone using it. Uh, most clans use a program called Ventrilo or TeamSpeak to uh, communicate with their other clan members. Below the stats bar you will see a help window. Now these will pop up throughout the Hoover Dam tutorial. Now they provide textual guides on how to interact or what needs to be done next. Now they can be closed by just clicking the X. On the bottom left is your chat window. This is your communications hub. This is where you will interact with other players and staff uh, via the other channels that are available by using help channel, global, region, auction channel, your clan chat. Below the chat window you will see the menu button with quick launch icons. Currently the icons shown are inventory, waypoints, equipment, blood sports, stats, options, help, and exit. The funnel looking icon is for filtering the quick launch. If you click on it, you can change what quick access icons you want shown. The next window we're going to look at is your action bar. This is where you can drag actions and mutations and sometimes items to and have quick access to. On the top right of your screen is the minimap. This lets you see many bits of information such as mission waypoints, NPCs, both friendly and not so friendly, vendors, players, and team members. Directly below your minimap you will see your current mission. This lets you keep a small reminder of your current mission goals. The movement in Fallen Earth is pretty straightforward. You use your standard W to move forward, S to move backwards, Q to turn left, E to turn right, A to strafe left, D to strafe right, and space to jump. Another option is using the cursor keys on the keyboard for the same movements. For quicker turns, try this. Right click and hold your right mouse button and move your mouse around. This allows you to turn faster than the keyboard but you still need to use a forward or backwards key to move. 
Once you are in the tutorial, you'll be standing in front of what's called a LifeNet pod. Now this item will be something you will become very familiar with throughout the game. This LifeNet pod is used to reclone you should you die in the wastelands of Fallen Earth. Now it's also used in the fast travel system. Now I'll talk more about the fast travel system in a later tutorial. Move forward into the bigger room ahead of you, stopping just past the steps. Don't get too close to the NPC technician just yet, otherwise he'll become upset and attack you. You will indeed need to attack and kill him, but for right now, you need a moment to get your action together before you go on. To attack, you either press the tab key or middle mouse button, and you will see a target cursor come up in front of you. Go into combat mode, walk towards the NPC. When you get close, hold down your right and left mouse button, and this will cause you to swing your fists. You'll easily defeat this NPC and have the ability to loot his body. To get out of combat mode, press the tab again or the mouse wheel. Now that you defeated the technician, you can loot the body. To loot the body, stand next to him and move your mouse over the body. You will see that the cursor has changed into a skull icon. This means you can interact with this body and loot it. Left click once and you'll begin the looting process. If things go well, you'll be rewarded with items. In this case, you will get a life net jacket and a can of brown bread. Yummy. In this tutorial, your goal is to escape Hoover Dam. You will get some assistance by a person called Elena Winters, who will communicate with you over the speakers. She needs you to interact with the computers to help get you out of the dam. Mission givers can be seen by, as having a yellow biohazard symbol floating over them. Mission givers can be anything from NPCs, computers, books, even animals. Yellow means they have a mission for you. Red means that you already have a mission in your queue from them. And green means you have a completed mission to turn in. Click the computer terminal with the biohazard symbol over it. You'll now get an option to interact with the computer. You're usually given several choices to pick from, or the one that lets you go right to the mission. You can explore the other options in this, or just go right to the mission. Once you've explored all the options, select Consider It Done, and continue with the mission. A new window will pop up giving you the option to accept or reject the mission. Before you accept, notice at the bottom of the mission window is a small checkbox that says Track This Mission. What this does is it keeps the mission active and on top of all other missions. Accept the mission. You now need to click on another computer system for Elena. Now you don't have to go very far. Just go to your right and you'll see another computer terminal that looks exactly like the one you just got the mission from. Go ahead and touch it. The mission will update and you'll go back to the first computer that gave you the mission and you'll interact with it again. You will complete the mission and be given a new mission. Look at your mini-map and follow the red X. This is your mission waypoint. The waypoint will take you to a set of doors. Touch the doors to open them. You'll now need to get a weapon. In front of you, you'll see a corpse with an axe in its head. The mission gives you a little hint by glowing the corpse so you can see that's where you need to go. Move towards the corpse and click on it and you'll receive the axe. Press the I for inventory then right click on the axe and select equip. You can also double click on the axe to also equip it. Now congratulations, you are now armed with an axe. Move forward into the room and you'll come to Sarah. You can talk to her if you want, but she does not give you any emissions or loot, just information. You can skip past her for the sake of the tutorial. The next part of the mission requires you to kill the two white crow guarding the door. It'll be a two-on-one fight in their favor but you're a tough clone and can take them, you think. Now before we start to fight, let's take a moment and talk about the combat. If you enter combat mode, you will see your target cursor. Fallen Earth is different than other MMOs in regards to combat. In Fallen Earth, you have to keep the target cursor on the target for damage to take place. You can't auto-aim on the target. In Fallen Earth, you have to work for your kills. Enter into combat mode by pressing the tab button or the middle mouse button. 
and move forward towards the white crow. When you get near enough, they will see you and come running towards you. Attack and kill them. If you aim for the head, you do get better damage. Don't forget to loot all your kills. You may miss some special drops. Continue down the corridor to the door and click the door to open it. When it opens, you'll get a new mission to kill the white crow in the next room. With his back turn, you can get behind him and get a couple of swings in before he reacts. Once you kill him, loot the body. You'll be rewarded with a basic slug thrower and a couple hundred rounds of ammo. Open your inventory by pressing I and right click on the slug thrower and select Equipped. Or you can double click it to equip it. Once you have it equipped, press Control 2 to swap from the axe to the slug thrower. You want to go back to the axe, press Control 1. Follow the mission waypoint to the door. Touch the door to open them. Follow the hall to another set of doors. Open the doors and enter combat mode. You'll see several light bears being attacked by clone dissectors. You notice that the bad guys have red names over them. It helps distinguish the friendly and non-friendly targets. You can now try out your new slug thrower and shoot the dissectors. A helpful feature of the slug thrower is that it has a scope on it. This allows you to zoom in and shoot them from a distance. With the slug thrower equipped, press and hold the right mouse button to enter scope mode. Place the crosshairs on the target you wish to hit and press the left mouse button to fire. Once you have helped kill them, exit combat mode to loot the bodies for more ammo. Now as soon as you've killed the dissectors, someone's going to yell snipers and they're all going to run for cover. Now here's a little helpful hint for any of you that are deciding do you want to use anything that uses ammunition, pistols, rifles, shotguns, things like that, is you always want to make sure that you reload when the fighting's done or there's a lull in the fighting because you don't want to be caught with an empty magazine. To reload, you press the R button on your keyboard. Move forward into the room again and using your slug thrower, enter combat mode and then enter scope mode and target the snipers. Make sure you're within range of them to shoot them. If you're not within range, you'll see the distance you're away from them in red. Move forward a few steps if it's in red and try again. If the numbers are in yellow, you're good to go. The snipers are pretty easy to kill. Two or three headshots and they're down. Once you've taken care of the snipers, you can now interact with a light bear mission giver. With him, he gives you some medical supplies and a new skill, Staunch Wound. Staunch Wound is used to heal you or other people. Once you get your medical supplies, head to the next mission waypoint. Follow the waypoint and click on the door to open. Once inside, you'll be addressed by an enforcer. Notice the mission giver symbol over his head. He has something for you to do. Talk to him and get the next part of the mission. He is needing you to heal his partner. Accept the mission. We'll now have a chance to use our new skill, Staunch Wound. Once you have the mission, click on the Enforcer, Sylvie, and she'll become highlighted. She'll also have a ring around her. This means you have her targeted. Now, in your action bar, you'll see an icon that looks like an arm bandaged. This is your Staunch Wound ability. Press the icon to use the ability, or you can press the number 2 on your keyboard. Now this will begin to heal the Enforcer. Once healed, you'll be attacked by some white crow. Help the enforcers deal with them, and don't forget to loot the bodies for more ammo. Follow your mission waypoint to another set of doors and enter the room. You'll see a cargo elevator in front of you. When you step on the elevator, you'll be granted some new skills. You'll be using these new skills in the next room. Press the keypad on the elevator, and it'll take you up to the next room. In the next room, you'll have two white crow that you'll have to eliminate in order to move on. If you look at the mini-map, you'll notice two red dots. Those represent the bad guys. You can zoom in and zoom out on the mini-map by pressing the plus and minus button on the mini-map. Using your weapon of choice, attack and kill both white crow. They'll be easy. Just aim for the head for better damage. Don't forget to loot the bodies. When you loot, you'll be rewarded with a basic crude zip gun on each of the white crow. 
you can equip the zip guns if you want and give them a try. They use the same ammo as the slug thrower. Follow the mission waypoint to the location in the room. In front of you are several interactive objects called nodes. The first one you'll be interacting with is called a crafting kit box. Move towards it and when your mouse icon changes you can click on the box and loot its contents. You'll receive a basic crafting kit box and it will be placed in your inventory. Open your inventory if it's not already open, right click on the box and select use. You'll then be given one starter kit for each trade skill in the game. Now that you have your kits, move forward to the next mission waypoint. Here you will get the harvest to junk pile node. Just like before, click on the pile and you'll begin to scavenge it for anything valuable. When finished, you'll be rewarded with a chunk of salvaged copper. The next node is a coal node. Go on and harvest that. You'll get a piece of salvaged coal out of that one. The last part on this is a potted plant. You harvest that and then you'll get a weak biological chemical. And congratulations, you just learned how to harvest nodes. We're almost through the tutorial. Just a couple more things to do here. Follow the mission waypoint to the next door. You have to listen to Elena over the radio for a moment before you can open the door. Once you can open the door, follow the waypoint to your new location. Run up to Harvey Vegas and get a new mission from him, and then follow him. He will take you to a new room. Talk to him again once you get into this new room and get an updated mission. Looks like you're going to get to drive an ATV. Follow the steps down into the pit and stand next to the ATV. You'll be attacked by several mutant creatures called Underdwellers. Kill them and loot their bodies. Now that you've taken care of the Underdwellers, you can now ride the ATV to the vault. Move your mouse over to the ATV and you'll see it change into a steering wheel. This means you can get on it. Click the ATV to get on. Using the same movement keys you've been using, move the ATV to the next waypoint. Sorry to say this, clone, but you died. But don't worry, LifeNet is here to help. Watch the LifeNet video to learn a little history. Once that's over, you'll be placed in a LifeNet terminal that has a mission giver computer in it. This is where you will choose your starting town. Click on the computer and see the list of towns and read the descriptions. Choose a town that offers the skills that you wish to learn first. Don't worry, clone. You can go to any of the other towns and do any of the other missions in them too. The starter town is just really a personal preference. Choose your town and you'll be transported there. Congratulations clone, you have escaped Hoover Dam. Welcome to the Wasteland. Now go out and do your best.